So if you're running a battery box system in your vehicle, but you also want to connect some circuits hardwired to the vehicle because you take your battery box in and out and you have got more circuits. You want to have work lights, you want to have a fridge continuously connected. You might have other charge ports throughout the car. The relay hub will enable you to get the best out of both worlds. A power system that you can take in and out of the car and use in multiple vehicles. And the relay hub will be the part that connects the battery box to the vehicle-based installation. The way it goes is that you use the main power supply input and you're going to connect that to one of the big power supply outlets on your battery box. So on these battery boxes we've got Anderson plugs in the front and we can just plug in a thick gauge cable and supply power to our relay hub. We've set this up on the bench with this which is simulating the start battery that is feeding the DC-DC charger on the battery box and then the relay hub is plugged into a power output on the front of the battery box. So it means the relay hub is running directly off the battery inside the battery box. And then we've got this light here connected that's simulating a fridge, this light here connected that's simulating a work light and a switch where we can turn it on and off. As soon as that is plugged in, I can turn on the power supply. Now we get power to the main supply of the relay hub, which means fuses one to five and the extra fuse that's powering the switch bank that you might have connected or the switching system that you have connected here are live. And as you can see, because this is simulating a fridge, because you can use these old power supply connections as constant power supplies. This is the fridge. It's drawing a little load or it tries to draw a load, but there's no fuse in here. So you can see the blown fuse indicators coming on straight away. And as soon as I put the fuse in, our fridge is just turned on. Obviously we just simulate that with the light because these old supply connectors are also power outlets. So every time you've got power supply here and you put a fuse in you get constant power on these outputs so supply one supplies old supply one supply two old supply two and so on and so forth but if you also want to switch something uh, you put the fuse into supply one you put a relay into the first relay base and then you wire a switch you can use them with background illumination you put a fuse in here that's the switch power supply and you've got a power supply running to the switch. You've got a ground supply running to the switch and you've got a return cable from the switch into switch input number one. And as, as soon as I turn that on, it switches the relay on and you can have a circuit that's switchable with the switch. You can actually use multiple different switching system so you can have a remote as well and just feed into the same input you can even have multiple voltages you can have 12 and 24 volt switch inputs you just need to separate them with diodes if they go into the same switch input in our instructional video about the layout and the main functionality of the relay hub we explain how you can do that and that way you can have multiple sources switching the same circuit. You can also use, just say you want to have your driving lights switched through that as well. You could use a start battery feed going to supply five. For example, you can use any of the supplies. You just have to make sure that there's no fuse put in because now you're using an external fuse and you're supplying directly power from the start battery here to relay number five and you can use a high beam trigger through a switch going to switch input number five and you connect your driving lights to load five and now you can use relay number five to switch your driving lights on and off with a high beam trigger. So you see this is a very versatile unit because you can have multiple voltages connected to it as input triggers you can have anything from five to thirty volt 
it will still switch on the relay because this little electronic unit here makes sure that we can have a multi-voltage input. It will then just turn the relay on from the supply to that circuit. There's even more to it. Just in case you want to do fault finding, we've got LED on the outlet. So let's say you switch on your circuit number one, but your light isn't coming on. You can have a look here and you see that the LED is coming on, which means everything works. Your switch circuit works up until this point because you've got a control light here that turns on and off with the switch. So you know the fault is further down the line. As you can see, we've just disconnected the light. You can rectify the fault. And as soon as you've done that, the light will turn back on. There's another feature to this. If you have a look at these switches here, as soon as you flick one of these, these are override switches, you can turn the load on without having the switch circuit connected. As soon as you turn this on, this will even disconnect the switch circuit. So if there's any fault further down the line here, but you have to switch on the loads. This is like a last resort backup situation. You have still got a means of turning the load on. Another use case for this is fault finding, just in case something doesn't work. You don't understand why, you can just check and you know straight away, cool, the power supply works, the relay works, the output works, so it has to be something with the switch. So you can see we've actually put systems in place here that if you have to fix these somewhere out and about, you don't need multimeters necessarily, you don't even need test lights, everything for fault finding is built into the circuit board itself. So you see this way you can add up to 10 circuits to your vehicle, five switched ones and five constant power circuits that all run off your battery box. But now comes the next cool thing. Because what happens if the battery box isn't in the car, but you get caught out and about and you still want to use your lights. As you can see at the moment, we've got our start battery feeding the DC-DC charger with an Anderson plug. And in the front of this battery box here, we have got an Anderson plug that goes into the power supply and feeds the relay hub. Now, if I would take the battery box out, what I would do is I'll turn it off. I disconnect the power supply to the relay hub. I do disconnect the start battery power supply to the box that usually feeds the DC-DC charger to charge the battery. The battery goes away. It might be sitting in my shed. But what you can do now is you just plug these two Anderson plugs together. And now all the circuits on here are running directly off your start battery. Obviously you have to be careful not to run your start battery down because if the fridge runs for days, you won't be able to start your car anymore. But this means that your vehicle based installation can run either off your battery box or it can run out of your, uh, of your start battery in case the battery box isn't in the vehicle. I think that is an awesome feature. And is really handy for everybody who's using battery boxes, which are becoming a lot more popular these days. So as you can see, this is an incredibly versatile piece of kit. But our question between the two of us has been, have we not thought of something? There's probably more. There are probably some. We're, we're, so our invitation to you is that if you can think of another use case for that relay hub, we would like to invite you to send to an email address, info at egon.com.au. That's correct, yes. <laughs> and um, we will make an instruction video on the Relay Hub, showing you how you might use it in the application that you've come up with. Yeah, and that enables us to make these videos and explain to you how to do it properly in that application. Yeah. And we might even come up with new scenarios and new ideas for new products. So your feedback is greatly appreciated. Really will be.